Hey gang, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I am, first of all, doing a real quick sketch for an oil painting commission. Let me show you some of the reference that I'm working from. First of all, I'm working from an earlier sketch. I don't have the original here, but I have a copy of it. So this is a sketch that I've already done for my client. She liked a lot of it but made uh, several recommendations. So I started a new sketch. One of the recommendations is that I include, this is somebody's garden in the backyard. Very glorious garden in the backyard. She wants a swing. She wants to accentuate the coral bark Japanese maple and her birdhouse. So, and, and then here are her comments, her notes that I've printed up. So I've got all that reference that I'm working from, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't I didn't get you in on the beginning of this project, but I can tell you what I've already done. Um, I did two watercolor pencil sketches, a watercolor pencil. Got that? And I did it with kind of a fuchsia, pinkish, cranberry color, and then purple, because I expect this scene to be mostly. Um, green and blue, so I did complimentary. Okay, then on my phone here, just a little while ago, on my backup phone, I looked up some longleaf pine. I think it's the state tree of North Carolina. It's not. It certainly should be. <laughs> it's ubiquitous it's everywhere. Um, and it's a nice tree, so I just wanted to refresh my memory of what such a tree looks like with the branches at the top of the go up, down, or straight out? That's a good question, right? They go up or down or straight out. And it looks to me like they do all three. So on average, they go straight out. And, and then some go down, and then some go up. So I'm back to finish some of that one. bigger brush. If you've watched these ever before the watercolors, I've confessed previously that uh, and here's what I want to go by. I'm going to look at my earlier sketch. I've confessed that um, for some reason I am really hooked on flat brushes for in, in watercolors. And I've done an awful lot of watercolors in my life. Um, and I'm not saying that flat brush is the way to go. Hey, Adrian. Uh-oh, loud hiss. Oh, my goodness. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Um, I will pause. I, I did a sound check. I did several sound checks.
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I had three, four, five things to plug in. One of them I plugged in wrong. You guys, I am so sorry. Oh my goodness. Well, I'll probably erase. Okay, Petka, can you hear me now? Anita, <laughs> let me get pull this in. I'm assuming you can hear me now. Thank you for giving me that, giving me that chat. And evidently, I missed an earlier chat. Oh, <laughs> you guys. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. Well, as like I said, I will probably erase that this whole broadcast because that is just inexcusable. And you can't believe what clever things I was saying. It's just it would make your head spin. <laughs> to hear how brilliant I was when you guys couldn't hear me. <laughs> hey, Cause. Oh, my goodness, you guys. I am so sorry. So you're just sitting there in silence. That's three of you sitting there in silence. Hey, Monique. Sitting there in silence watching me paint. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, this, this, deserves, this, this deserves a face-to-face. -face. <laughs> Oops, and now I dropped you. Oh my goodness. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the explanations were absolutely precious. Trust me. <laughs> they were. I was brilliant. You can't believe all the good things I was saying. Oh man, I solved all the problems of the world. I solved all the political problems in America right now. I, uh, I, I cured cancer. <laughs> And I'm not going to try to repeat any of it. It just wouldn't be the same. Okay, back to painting. <laughs> I will edit all this stuff out later. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks, you faithful few, for watching. And thank you, thank you, thank you for letting me know that there was no sound. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, cause yeah, right. <laughs> hey, maybe I know what you're telling me. It's It was better without me talking. I'm getting a message now. <laughs> we liked it better when we couldn't hear you. <laughs> Things are getting worse here at my house. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so well, you're out of luck now because now you can, now the sound is working. Oh, I will tell you a little bit about what I was saying. I will go because uh, uh, um, I started this broadcast about 45 minutes ago. That is part of what I was saying, and and then somebody uh, chatted and said that. Uh, um, there was static and I was sore dismayed because I thought I had worked out all the static issues. So it took me 40 minutes of very intense <laughs> experimentation to figure out what was going on. And I did, the good news is I did figure out what was happening. That's the good news. The bad news is it was the power cord to my phone was causing noise. So, I mean, it's good that I found out because, so now I'm unplugged. The bad, the bad news is, of course, my, unless I remember to take a break pretty soon and plug my phone back in, I, you know, I can't broadcast all day um, with noise. Uh, anyway, so there you go. So uh, that is part of what I was saying. <laughs> and thank you to whoever it was who notified me about an hour and a half ago or whatever, an hour ago now that I had static so first I had static, and then I had no sound whatsoever. Dang. I will get this live broadcasting thing down eventually, I promise. <laughs> I'm getting closer. I went out a month ago and bought a nice, expensive Sennheiser wireless microphone, and it's taken me all this time to learn the bugs in it. And I hope I'm done now. hope I'm done debugging. Okay, so as I said at the beginning of my first broadcast, this is a watercolor sketch for a commissioned oil painting. And I probably don't need to do quite this much work just for a sketch, but I want to do because I'm an artist and I like producing beautiful things, even if it doesn't make financial sense for me to do so. All of you who are artists, you know exactly what I'm talking about there. You feel the same way. When you put your head down on your pillow at night, you feel good if you made money. <laughs> the 
part of the tragedy of being an artist is you feel better if you did good art. <laughs> that's why, that's my, the, most of us are not <laughs> fabulously wealthy because our heart bleeds art, not money. I once complained to a, a very successful, very successful businessman that I, that I complained about the, the arrangement of the cosmos as it pertains to artists. And I said to him, it's just not fair because you are a gifted businessman. So for you, making money is easy. It's your art. It's your talent. It's your skill. I'm a gifted artist. But because I'm a gifted artist, I'm not a gifted businessman. And it's just not fair. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Now, I'm not bragging here. I'm thinking that's really stupid, but that is the way I felt, and that is what I said. And he said something lame like, yeah, well, you don't have to learn oh, everything about art, just you know, enough to make it as an artist. And he was right, of course, but I was right too. Because <laughs> the fact is, most artists are not brilliant business people. Just I want to say to myself, get over, you know, do the best you can, do what you can, try, hire people to help you. That's that's been my great discovery in the last seven or eight years, I think, is hire people to fill in. Of course, that means you have to be making enough money to hire people. And if you, you can't afford to hire them because you're not making enough money, and if you're not making enough money, you can't afford, you know what I mean, anyway. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So here I am trying to do a nice painting, much nicer than needs to be done. Why? Because when I, my head hits my pillow tonight, I'll be really happy if I do a nice little watercolor sketch for my client. <laughs> uh, I am glad I, I do make a living. I make an okay living as an artist. I'm supporting at the moment a house full of 10 people. <laughs> and they're all mostly, mostly, at least until recently, they were all living on my income. Um, that included four children, of course, grandchildren. But anyway, so I'm not complaining. I know a number of artists. One thing that I do miss, not that I was there, you understand. But one thing that I do miss about the Middle Ages was the patronage system that, as I understand it, in the Middle Ages, there was a system it was basically called the church. There was a system that supported, now there's a whole lot of things about that church, of course, that most of us would not be great fans of today. And I, I same, same here, I'm not saying I loved a lot of it, but there was one thing that they did well, and that is that they had a place for extremely gifted artists to work. Who do you think built all those amazing, gorgeous cathedrals and those stained glass windows and all that statuary? Oh, my goodness. I remember the first trip that I took to Paris, and, 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 and Italy would be even worse, <laughs> so to speak, better, even more extreme. But I remember the first trip I took to Paris and walking like a tourist. We did the, we did the straight-up tourist thing and just walked and walked and walked all over Europe and um, I, of course my my jaw was hanging open like 98% of the time and and one of the, a funny picture came to my mind repeatedly <laughs> while we were walking around Paris looking at all this marble statuary marble statues not concrete like we have in you know down home country USA where it's a concrete molded thing. <laughs> no, real marble statue. And I thought, dang, somebody sure did wear out a lot of chisels <laughs> in this city. Somebody wore out <laughs> megatons of iron or steel chisels. I mean, just, uh, it's just jaw dropping, just absolutely jaw dropping. Um, when I was in college, when I was an art major, in college, one of my fellow students decided for his for sculpture 
for his sculpture project one semester. He decided he wanted to try his hand at um, marble sculpture. So he ordered, I think it was a 100 pound block of marble, <laughs> which by the way, is only, is only, you know, <laughs> smaller than a half your bread box, <laughs> a hundred pound marble. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he worked on that thing all semester long. Now, let me insert, I'm not sure that he worked, you know, you know, <laughs> he kind of worked like a college kid, I think. <laughs> I think he might have attended a party or two <laughs> or 20. And I think he might have had fun, friends and had fun in college. So I'm not saying he like, you know, like he burned a midnight oil, but he worked on it. We heard him, at, you know, at several, many times a week. We could hear him chiseling. We could hear him pound, not chiseling. Yeah, I guess chiseling, pounding away down the hall. We could hear him. <laughs> We could hear him and see him. If we went around the corner, we could see him working on his 100 pound block of marble. Well, at the end of the semester, I, and I'm not kidding, at the end of the semester, when it came time for him to turn in his, uh, you know, semester's work, <laughs> he had turned a 100 pound cube of marble into a 100 pound cube of marble with the corners rounded off. <laughs> That's all he had done all semester. All that pounding and chiseling, chink, 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 chink. All semester long, we heard him pounding on his, uh, on his marble. <laughs> At the end of the semester, all he done was round off all the corners. <laughs> That gave me a great deal of respect for marble. <laughs> marble versus college student. <laughs> marble won, hands down. It was a, it was a, it was a wipeout, man. <laughs> it, the marble won completely. Anyway, so when I walked around Paris and saw all those multi-thousand-pound hunks of marble carved into you know, sinews and veins and so on. Oh my goodness. Well, a lot of that work was done in the Middle Ages, especially when you go in the old cathedrals and see all those, you know, all those Madonna and Childses and so on and so on and so forth. Um, that was done by artisans. They didn't even call them artists, of course. They were just craftsmen. Viva la craftsmen. And uh, one of the good things about it is that artist didn't have to do any marketing. <laughs> the church just, you know, they took all his work his entire life. Because many times uh, 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 an artisan like that would work his or her, his entire life on one cathedral. And it wouldn't be, he, he, it was started before he got there. And when he died 60 years later, it still wasn't finished. Think about it. Think about it. And uh, the thing is, I know a lot of artists today who, who I wish I could send them back in time because they're really skilled at what they do. And I'm talking about the skilled ones. But they're so skilled that they can't make a living as an artist, if you know what I mean. There, there really is something about... There's something about the more normal a person is the less creative they are or something something like that I, I i don't know what the formula is but there there's something to the more creative a person is the less normal they are and i'm, I'm getting myself in trouble here but you probably know what i'm saying there's a there's a reason why artists are kind of weird and there's a reason why most of us have a hard time making a living the the creative impulse is an oddball impulse. I know it. I think I have a generous dose of it. I'm glad I don't have any more of it because if I did, it would be that much more difficult for me to make a living. So I'm glad I'm only so creative, not crazy creative. Okay. Is that, is that, is that enough blathering about? <laughs> I'm afraid it is. I'm sure it's way too much. Anyway, so 
at least you got to watch me do uh, some of this painting while I <laughs> blathered on. <laughs> Here's the the owner's black lab, or looks like a black lab to me anyway, in my crafts, and I think they want the dog to be in there. I'm going to put the dog in the sketch, and she can tell me if she doesn't want the dog in there. Let me go ahead and do, oh, one of the things I said when my microphone was not on is um, I enjoy I enjoy watercolor a lot. To me, it's like a little vacation. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Petka. Yes, yes, there is a diagonal missing right there. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> not that that isn't pretty dumb. I should have caught that, but thank you very much. Yes. And by the way, I have no idea if, where those diagonals are supposed to go because I don't have a picture of her swing from this angle. But still, that was that was certainly an omission on my part. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. I love that you guys can tell me what's wrong. And I'm sorry sometimes I miss your chats. I know I do that. I often, I do, I very often try to come back and comment on your chats after the fact, but in in the comment section. Okay, now there's some, there are some, they have a whole collection of birdhouses. At least two of them are red. So I have a feeling that red is one of their favorite colors for red house, for, for birdhouse. I like it too. It works really well in the painting. If we do one red, let's do one yellow orange. Oh my, life is exciting. It's one word for it. <laughs> um, now let's tackle the the coral bark if it's dry enough. I'm not sure it is. But coral bark Japanese maple. You can Google it the way I did. Beautiful tree. Amazing. It's like you look at it and go, is that real? Does it really look like that? Evidently it does. Bright red coral, really, well named. Bright red bark. Lime green, yellow lime green. Um, foliage. And I'm definitely going to come back and do uh, gouache, opaque watercolor on all of this. I think I can zoom in just a little more for you. Like how don't like how dark that little dog is. So let's lift out a little bit. That's easy, easy enough. There we go. I'm going to pause. That's good enough. Uh, I've bored you to tears <laughs> long enough. I'm sure. Um, I'm going to finish the watercolor, and then when I come at joining me today, I am doing finishing touches, perhaps you could call it, on a quick little, hey Petka, you are very welcome, bless you, thank you for joining me for a while, I know I missed you there earlier, but thank you so much for that comment, um, I'm going to turn on another light here, I could use, yeah, um, a quick little watercolor sketch, and uh, it's not a serious watercolor, because uh, first of all, it's got pen and ink, or this kind of pen in it so it's a sketch and also i'm going to use gouache so this is here's my gouache tray that's how gouache is spelled for those of you who are trying to figure out what's he saying g-o-u-a-c-h-e that'd be a good word for a spelling bee wouldn't it <laughs> gouache uh, but i'll i will <clears throat> let you listen in on my thought process while I do this. Um, even though this is just a watercolor sketch, I, which means I could easily get fixated on just drawing 
drawing a dog, drawing a swing, drawing a tree house, drawing a tree, drawing lilies, drawing a weeping willow, you know, drawing the thing. I really don't want to do that. Um, I wanted to have some artistic uh, value, <clears throat> perhaps is the word. And uh, in order for that to be the, oh, by the way, quick, quick tip here, just for what it, for what it's worth. Of course, this is all my colors of gouache, but I always keep a tube of fresh white because it's just, it, it's hard. Like this is a pile of dry white here. It just takes too much work to re-wet that, uh, in my opinion. And so I always have some, some fresh white at my fingertips. So I don't have to wrestle with getting uh, the light. Okay, so um, I was saying I want this, even though it's just a quick watercolor sketch for to, to get approval for a oil painting. Of course, I want to produce a good piece of artwork, and of course, I want to would like to, if if the client approves of the sketch, I would like to have some of the decisions already made in the in the watercolor stage in other words l let's go ahead and make some nail down some compositional issues some composition decisions are already are already made and uh, if you watch me before you know that composition the big C the big C in the world of painting refers to repeat after me class it refers pretty much only to the major light and dark areas of the painting okay composition has to do let me say that again with the dark areas and the light areas of the painting it doesn't really have much to do with lines. It does have to do with shapes, but shapes of what? Shapes of the major light and dark areas of the painting. It doesn't have much to do with texture or color even. It has to do, and I'm just trying to make this clear in your thinking, partly so it'll be clear in my thinking, of course, when I do it. What we're, what we're concerned with, and by the way, I think composition is maybe the number two What's the word I'm looking for? Deciding factor. The number two critical issue in 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 a painting is um, composition. Number one is play of light or marks themselves. Interesting marks, depending on how you hold your mouth. But composition is huge, 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 huge. Okay, and uh, composition relates to is refers to has to do with the major light and dark zones of a painting and uh, so i'm going to go ahead and and do some thinking about light and dark zones in this sketch so i don't have to wait and do that all in the final oil painting and i'll go ahead and tell you right off the bat in fact it's ref here's here's my earlier sketch that I did for my client and you can see it see this shaft of light right here so this everything that my brush handle is circling is it one shape ignore that it's two different colors it's all and three blue green and yellow it's all one shape and then there's this this outlier here everything else is dark and I'm aiming for a similar effect in this sketch i want this light shaft of light coming in at this angle let me pause right there put down my uh, green paint and let's continue i think i can use this big brush i mentioned earlier today when my sound was not working <laughs> i mentioned that when well, you couldn't hear me that uh, for some reason and I don't recommend this, it's just the way I am. For some reason, in the realm of watercolor painting, when it comes to watercolor painting, for some reason, 
I, I, I'm hooked on um, flat brushes. I don't, and I don't, not at all in oil painting, not at all. Quite the contrary in oil painting, but in, now you'll notice I actually rarely use it, so to speak. Ah, be that as it may, that's, See, I wanted to get parts of this um, this swing in the shaft of light. I want part of the swing to be part of the shaft. <laughs> I can be use funny language there. I want part of the swing to to not break up the shaft of light, but to continue it. So, but I don't want the entire swing all bathed in, in equal amounts of light. That would be boring. So let's, let's try that there now. tend to be somewhat messy in my mixing of uh, gouache. I don't keep them very neat for some reason. <laughs> you do not need to be like me in that regard. Feel free to be your neat self. Don't follow me in my messiness. I'm pretty neat in my oil painting palette, but I'm messy in my gouache palette is what I'm, what I'm saying here. What I'm trying to say is, Sometimes I'm neat and sometimes I'm not. Um, I'm looking for a yellow in my tray and don't seem to have it. Hang on. Just got to be yellow. It's just dirty with green, so it looks green. There we go. See, I should have been neat. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to mix up a very pale yellow here for this the path as it goes around and I'm going to actually smudge so that it looks like so it really looks like light hitting same thing over here More white, white or white. Um, by the way, I've really enjoyed in recent months of uh, following James Gurney. James Gurney of Dinotopia fame. Very, very excellent illustrator. And he has a fun little blog uh, that he, he posts most of the time, it, it seems. He's uh, posting um, himself doing tiny little plein air paintings in gouache. And uh, even just the fact that he uses gouache has kind of encouraged me a little bit. It's, it, it's never been my favorite medium. Um, uh, and... Uh, but he's, he's encouraged me to kind of see its potential a little bit more, not be ashamed of it or afraid of it, as the case may be. So there's the chains holding up the swing. I decided to put, just for decorative purpose, um, I'd almost put a candle on it, but that'd be too small for this, for this sketch. 
you know, little frou-frou, little things that, that a, a decorator person might do finishing touches in a garden oh i just came up with an idea just thank you lord okay the the flowers on this bush back here i've got little balls drawn for flowers but i hadn't decided what color they should be well i just decided now my client can change my mind for me of course but i just decided to make them white or light very 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 pale yellow actually um, why? Because that would help accentuate, that would help continue this abstract shaft of light that I am indicating down. Say that, that it, it, it sort of represents a shaft of sunlight. You could say that. I wouldn't mind if the analytical people uh, interpreted it as, as a shaft of sunlight. But it doesn't really need to be a shaft of sunlight. It's just just the way all the elements in the painting happen to line up so that we get a light and an angle like that there well that was a that was a nice act nice serendipitous moment there and i missed somebody's chat comment just a minute ago i am so sorry i will try to catch in fact let me let me move my monitor my phone down here let's see if i can see if i can catch it a little more quickly let's try that so what, what i just did is there's there's my monitor right there so i don't like to miss your comments um music's a little too loud thank you very much yes i am using usually when i if if i think the music is going to be picked up in the background um i use music that i have uh paid for as a matter of fact i have primarily three sources for my copyright available because I paid for it and they're all two of the three of the four I said four sources and three of the four are dear friends of mine musicians that I paid for the privilege of using their music and my videos <sighs> soften the edges of that just a little bit A few, a few details. Let me go to a, a smaller brush now. Be done with you. I could have put that water a little closer to me, couldn't I? I'm really <laughs> to stretch for that. Um, here's a white, nice Winsor Newton Series Seven miniature. Gouache is fun. Now, the, the downside of gouache, of course, is that it, it's never stable. Um, you would have to uh, put it behind glass if it were being displayed in a, in a public place because one drop of water in the entire painting could disappear. <laughs> yeah, because it, it's never stable. So that's the, one of the main reasons it's not used extensively in fine art. It's used very much in illustration, where the illustration goes, you know, in the olden days, goes to the printer. The printer makes a copy of it, and, and that's the end of the illustration. That's the end of the use of the illustration. Nowadays, of course, if you're working, as I did for many years as an illustrator, the, uh, the illustration never leaves your studio because you scan it. At least I think this is... Pretty much all illustrators work this way. You scan it yourself and you send the, your client a JPEG, an, an image. Unlike the olden days, we actually used to ship out our illustration. The illustration itself would leave it. And now it seems amazing to me. Um, and I lost many, many good illustrations because of that. They'd go out to the scanning company or the, the printing company and I would never see them again. That's just part of the part of the bad part of being an illustrator. So I just did a few highlights and I want these to look like lilies. One of the things I was telling you back when my microphone was not on, um, the woman's name that I'm doing this for is Rose 
Lily. Cute, huh? And she's she is aware of <laughs> of her the uniqueness of her name. So I'll be sure that I'll point out to her that the two most prominent flower groups in this painting are roses and lilies. I want to come in here and do some some red highlights. Pink actually. Pink highlights on these red roses. And just some little some buds, you know the way roses do. This kind of rose. So one of the things I'm going to do with this with this illustration, when I'm done, I'm going to scan it in, like into my computer, tweak it in Photoshop, fix anything that I don't like about it, and um, send my client one clean copy. But then on another copy, I'm going to make many annotations. That is to say, I'm going to point, have a little box or an arrows and point to all these different bushes, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe eight different kinds of plants down here in the foreground. And I'm going to ask her what kind of flower or flowers or bush, if any, would you like? And because she's very much into her, um, into her flowers, by the way, and, and again, another thing that was, I was saying earlier when you couldn't hear me was this this garden that I went and visited and took pictures, several pictures of it. It's truly spectacular. I mean, it's way, way beyond the normal, way, 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 way beyond the normal backyard garden. Um, so it was quite, quite the treat just to, just to see it and to take a little tour of it. I was quite impressed when I got there. After I saw it, I said, oh, so that's why you want somebody to do a painting of your garden. That's nice. Can you see those purple flowers back there? That added a very nice touch. As far as I can tell, there's no purple anywhere else in the painting, so that, that helped. Now, there's also no yellow per se anywhere else in the painting. So let's let's be sure to do some yellow flowers right here along the path down here. And again, I'll send her a you know a questionnaire. Say what kind of what kind of plant, what kind of flowers would you like here? And she may take some of my suggestions. She might say, well that looks kind of like whatever. I'm not even gonna attempt to name <laughs> a kind of flower outside of my you'll notice perhaps here that I am doing the same trick that I do now that I'm using an opaque medium opaque gouache I'm doing the same trick that I do in oil painting which is darks first lights last I put down for instance a medium dark purple then come back and do light purple on top of it I put down a dark yellow and come back and do light yellow on top of it exact same formula principle as uh, many of us would do in oil painting. Now I think some, some a really sh bright shaft of chartreuse would be perfect right in here in this brightest near the brightest part of the painting right in here. And while I've got that color mixed up, let's do some leaves. She was very particular about the leaves on this coral bark uh, Japanese maple. Very particular about the color in the springtime. Now, we are taking some liberties. She, she has already 
mention that, that we're, we're having some things in bloom <laughs> at this co coincidentally um, that, that would not be truly blooming at the same time. But she feels okay taking that liberty. In fact, we moved this swing to a, to a place in her garden where it is not. It's actually back that way, about 100 feet where that this particular swing actually sits. But she suggested that we bring it way up front, which no problem with me, of course, but I was a little surprised she wanted to take quite that much liberty. That's, that's why we do things like do sketches and communicate with each other. Trying to mix up a dull or green for some of these leaves back here. She may tell me what kind of tree she wants this to be as well. This is obviously a sleeping, uh, sleeping, <laughs> a weeping willow, sleeping willow. It's a new kind of tree. <laughs> And some green on the rose bush. Yes, it was very intentional. I made the the area behind this rose bush uh, the darkest area of the painting. That was planned out. I think that was a good decision. So I'm very close, very close to finished. Um, let's just do a little bit more leafy stuff. Hey, Mark, welcome. Yes, um, don't go back and listen to the rest. <laughs> this is indeed, yes, a watercolor sketch for an oil painting commission. Um, it's the second one that I've done. This is, this is a copy of the first sketch that I did. There were several things about it that she liked, but then she made several recommendations. And as you can see, I'm doing quite a bit more work on this one than I did on the last one. Good to have you on board, Mark. Um, so I'm just, just about finished. I think there's two things that I'm going to do to this. Um, one, oh, one is I'm going to correct the dog's nose. I had him looking down a little bit and then decided, no, he was more more black labish, more dogish if he had his chin up. So there he is with his chin up. Um, okay, besides that though, <laughs> I'm gonna do two things. One is I'm going to, well, I keep, I keep finding things that I need to do before I do that. Okay, I'm gonna do some of these um, red uh, coral bark sections. Coral bark, Japanese maple. So I want to come in here with some more of these very red branches. I'll show you my my reference for was this. I talked about this earlier when my microphone wasn't turned on. Um, I did a Google search for coral bark Japanese maple and just did a screenshot of the search results. In other words, instead of printing out any one of these, I just did the whole thing so that that gave me a lot wider variety. Whoops, I have a two-year-old knocking on my door. All, his, all the older brothers and sisters know they're not supposed to bother me this afternoon. But he, being two, <laughs> missed the memo. But he can't open the door, so we'll see. Either he's going to go away, and which I'll let him, or he'll start crying, in which I'll, in case I'll probably need to go rescue him. So, Okay, now I was going to say, I was going to say just, Two more things I'm going to do to this painting. And again, I, I, this is plenty good enough, for, I think, for a, for a sketch. Um, but of course, I want it to look nice. In fact, I delivered a painting the other day. If you saw me last week doing um, Jerry's Bar, I, he loved it. I delivered Jerry's Bar to him. He was happy with it. And I also gave him the watercolor sketch. And I can't help but think that he was a, just a little bit happy to have the watercolor sketch. He said, yeah, I can put that at my office. So uh, 
you know, just a little extra benefit that I think as an artist we can give to people. The two things I'm going to do is come back and, and do just a little bit more pen and ink. Hopefully not getting carried away, hopefully not overworking. Um, just wherever, wherever I think the illustration can just use a little bit of this scratchy texture. Um, so a little pen and ink. And then the very last thing that I'm going to do after the pen and ink is actually come back with straight out of the tube white gouache and anywhere after the ink and any because I don't want I don't want black ink on top of white gouache, but I don't mind black ink on top of all these colors. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that's the way I feel about it, <laughs> as they say. So, and of course, anywhere where I want just a little bit more definition. Oh, here's here's yeah. Here's one. There's actually a fence way back. I don't know if you can see it. There's a, a real nice wrought iron fence back there in the woods. And uh, I want to re-accentuate that a little bit. I feel like that's a really nice element there back there in the background. And it's, it's a realistic element. So the more I can do to make this woman feel like, oh, that is my garden, you know, the, the, the more I, I feel like she'll be happy with the sketch. If it really, really, really looks like her garden. But at this point, I'm also just, all I'm doing is fussing with the illustration just to make it pretty, just to make it look like a nice illustration. Okay, so that's enough. I don't think you need to watch anymore. Um, I will do little bits of white, just little bits here and there and here and there. Not a lot. And again, I thank you so much for watching. I'll post this finished image um, on my YouTube community. Okay. So that's Daily Art Adventure 4. I've slowed down a little bit lately. I know you've probably, some of my old timers have noticed I'm not posting as often. It's because I'm working on a lot of other uh, social media issues, trying to get them caught up to what I'm doing on YouTube. So I've, I've divided my allegiance a little bit here lately, but I won't leave you completely. Okay.